Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to a sealed gameplay video for the Brothers War, playing this in the early access event. Thank you to Wizards of the Coast for inviting me to participate. So I got to play with the Brothers War on Arena a little bit ahead of schedule. The public release will be on the 15th, but maybe you're planning to play in the pre-release this weekend, and it's always nice to have some practice with the set. So I'll go over a sealed pool breakdown and some games afterwards as well. Okay, let's crank some packs. Our rares. Well, I guess, yeah, there's one more rare because this is just one of the retro artifacts. But we opened some nice mythics here. Battalion. Good curved topper. In a red deck. Got Awaken the Woods to make a bunch of mana in the first place. And Gwenna can also make a ton of mana. The uh, Quandary could also be decent. And uh, Legions to Ashes is good removal. So we opened some good cards, although... Spread out across a few different colors. You can see what the last rare is here. This Rune Chanter Spike sadly is not very good. And okay, just a Queen Kayla, also not the best. Let's take a look at maybe our uncommons first, just to take it slow here in white. Atlantic Net has good removal. We've got mm, nothing exciting in blue. I like the Butcher in black, if there's a board stall. Probably unlikely to play Corrupt since we're unlikely to be mono black, more likely to be two colors, at which point this is not too exciting. We've got Cinder Maw, always fine. The Demolisher could be another good curve topper in maybe a red-green ramp deck. Audacity is okay if we're aggressive enough. Might. Alright, Double Steel Seeker. And engineers, so kind of red green ramp is looking like the primary candidate. Mother great uncommons with the iconoclast, spider, the bear, one of my favorites. Can maybe make that work as well. Get a bit of fixing with chromatic star and burnished heart as well. Inspector's decent. Okay, go over to the commons and white. Disenchant is exciting, and the Engineer I like a lot too. Prison Sentence as removal, and that's about it. So yeah, white seems a color that can be left out pretty easily, or it's also decent. And then in blue, Double Rock is quite good, so we've got Subjugation as removal, and that's about it. Also not too exciting. Black. Nothing here I really like. Overwhelming Remorse, good removal too. Always be on the lookout for splashable removal spells in Sealed especially, since you can often get away with greedier mana bases where you splash for some removal to take care of the opponent's bombs, which they will assuredly be playing. A card like Remorse is something you could splash in an otherwise non-black deck of maybe an Evolving Wilds, a Swamp or two, and maybe an artifact that fixes your mana. Double Trench Stalker could also be good with enough card draw. And then in red, we have a couple combo tricks. All right, so red is kind of disappointing outside of our higher rarity cards. These are fine. And then green, I do like the Sprite quite a bit. Gives you a good mana sync. Confrontation is great. Opportunity is great. Making a power stone token. And then... Yeah, some more filler cards. And a golem's decent too. Worker for ramp. Okay, so I think green is definitely making it. Red-green seems likely. And see where we end up. Maybe one comma trick. Cinder Moss just good on rate. Don't think I'm playing Audacity. Maybe the Stalwart can also help fix our mana if we're trying to splash. The Mask could be good if we're ramping. Steel Seeker's great. And Honor Guard I can probably leave in the sideboard if we have enough playables. Razor Maw also cuttable. 
Why not great? Patrol seems good in this deck. Maybe play the six drop. Engineers. Alright, so this is kind of my first take on red green, and we've got almost a full deck. And then I haven't looked at some of the artifacts we could still play. Like a chromatic star. Burnished Heart definitely makes it. And I could see Inspector and Worker also being good enough, maybe even Retrieval Unit. Do we have some options? The Power Plant Worker is also playable. These can be 3 drops or 7 drops. Whirling Strike is especially good with the Automaton if our opponent tries to block the trade, we can turn it into a ton of extra damage. Confrontation, more removal. For the most part, just playing creatures and ramping a little bit. Which is not a bad strategy. This would be my first look at red-green. We don't have to take a look at kind of the details yet, the last two cuts. Or if I want to splash anything, just want to kind of make a visual representation of the deck, make a, a mental note of what we're working with, and then take a look at some other color pairs. Seems difficult for me to cut green altogether, so I'm gonna keep all the green cards in. This is what I would be doing in like a pre-release for instance. Now also uh, could easily play Battalion without red mana, just as a nine mana creature, as it is very impactful. Most of our good cards are still here. I could easily see not playing red, maybe a blue-green for double rock or additional ramp, and then we also pick up our uh, uncommon here that can draw additional cards. So let's see if blue-green is maybe more exciting. Romantic Star is always filler we can play no matter what, and there may be some synergies with it. In blue, we're looking at subjugation as interaction. Curate for a bit of card selection is fine. Could also play rebuff if we have lots of other instants. And yeah, with double oil loss rock, we can sometimes pass a turn, keep up our counter spells, and if we don't need to counter, we can still play our bird. Don't think we have enough artifacts for forging. Uh, flow is also more for a mono blue deck or heavy blue deck, which is not the case here. Okay, so this is my first look at blue-green, and yeah, kind of like this more than red-green. Still have the same powerful card, still playing Battalion. Um, maybe Demolisher I don't have to play since it's going to be difficult to unearth, but that's okay. This deck is maybe a little bit light on Curve Toppers. Yeah, I guess losing the automatons is a bit of a drawback here compared to the red-green build where we have more late game with prototype and of course demolisher too. So maybe there's a way I can just splash for only the battery bearer just because that card's so good. And it may be feasible with chromatic star, stalwart, and there may be some other fixing. So let's see if that works out. I guess we also have Burnished Heart, that also fixes, and Gwenna. So yeah, we actually have a decent number of ways to play better. But that does mean I have to cut Rock most likely. The main draw to Black would be Remorse, Foundry, and Spider, which are good cards, but I don't think they fit our game plan quite as well as our current configuration. We could go blue green splash red for unearth, but the problem is the unearth is double red. We may not necessarily have double red. And we also lose the utility of an early automaton on turn three, which we have with uh, red being our primary color. But uh, yeah, we could sort of mix and match. I do like the rock quite a bit, admittedly. So maybe I can just go main green with a bit of red, a bit of blue. I think we've kind of narrowed it down to the cards I want to play. I just need to make sure the mana is at least somewhat decent. Mutt 
we could always play as a bit of card selection. Okay, with a Steel Seeker too. As a cheap artifact that we can get back a few times. So that's always a card we could consider. Don't think any of these green cards are all that great. And then yeah, I think these red cards are also fine in the sideboard. And then just double checking remaining artifacts, retrieval units we could easily play. And we do have a bit of a gap at four mana, it seems. So we'll consider that. Probably don't need Sigil of Valor, even though it is a way to break a board stall potentially. And then the Firebomb, if we're light on interaction, could actually be decent if we have enough ramp, which may be the case here. So I'll at least consider it. Probably don't want Demolition Field, even though it could technically fix your mana. It relies on the opponent having non-basic land, which is not always going to be the case. And probably try and fit in the Engineers if we're going to play a bit of red. And uh, yeah, so these are all the cards I potentially want to play. Do we have any other mana fixing? I don't think we do. And yeah, no Evolving Wilds. Alright, so not uh, the best mana base, but we'll see if we can still uh, make it work. The red cards are Engineers, Battalion to an extent, Double Automaton to an extent, and Demolisher with uh, Unearth. And then blue cards are Battery Bearer, Double Rock. And that's it. And then the Mutt, I guess, is also red. So, just to get a better idea, this is not really a 2-drop. But the rest of our curve looks okay. Perimeter Patrol, we could easily cut. It's just a 3 minus 3 3 with slight upside. Not all that impressive. If we need to cut anything, that can go. I like the rest of the three drops. Retrieval unit, not the best, but it does synergize quite well with Steel Seeker. Uh, Mask is another mana sink that also plays well with a Steel Seeker. Worker we could maybe cut. And then the Paul Bearer also doesn't have a ton of synergy in our deck. I guess it's okay with the Gwena. But we already have quite a few expensive creatures. That work with it. Okay. This is 42. Probably okay to play 17 lands. Could maybe get greedy, play 16 because we have double Steel Seeker to find more lands and a couple other ramp cards. I guess on the flip side, the more lands we have, the more likely Steel Seeker is to find them. And then. Kind of looking at the top of our curve. Double rock at five. And bear. Yeah, stalwart seems good. Star seems necessary. So that's a card I could cut. Although if we have firebomb, it makes stalwart slightly better because we have another cheap artifact. And it's also decent with the steel seeker. And then mutts is potentially cuttable too. I don't think any of these are negotiable. And I'm kind of liking the retrieval units with Double Steel Seeker. Alright. These are the more questionable cards, so I'll just cut them. And then our game plan is just to kind of smash our big creatures into the opponent's stuff and hope to draw a few cards of Battery Bear, fly over with Coilos Rock, gain card advantage with Steel Seeker, Got a little bit of removal with Confrontation. But for the most part, looking to ramp early, and we can do so pretty well. Maybe I can go 4-4. Four and four. Although, it's not like I need to cast Automaton on turn 3. We have plenty of other 3-drops already. But uh, being able to play Engineers more reliably, I guess, would be nice. So, yeah, 4-4-9 four, four, with Star, Stalwart... Gwena, Burnished Heart, always to fix our mana, or our early game at least. Seems reasonable. Okay, pretty happy with this. Let's take it for a spin. This is a nice hand. 
Ooh, double steel seeker. Probably afford to play both first. Engineer is also great. Perfect mana. All right, so let's see here. If I play engineers, make a power stone. Next turn, I'll have five mana. Yeah, I guess I can afford to play another Steel Seeker first. Make it more likely we find some lands. And it shouldn't change our curve too much. Also have the option of playing four mana Golem. Okay, Urza's not bad. Worker is also decent. Yeah, I guess playing Worker as a reach creature to block Commando makes sense. Land is great. And another land, wow. Okay, so we immediately netted two cards. Might as well attack for one. So we're not going to miss another land drop. And next turn, six mana. Doesn't cast any of my big creatures, but happy enough playing Engineer. And then we're safe to block Commando. Let's see here. Do I want to awaken the woods? Just playing Engineers. Probably good enough, and then we can maybe save this to make even more tokens. Get a bunch more card selection. Oh yes. Burnished hearts. Eh, probably won't need that anymore. And don't think I'm playing a 3-2 haste. So, which to play first is a question. Maybe like a golem to bait out removal, if they have an enchantment to lock down my creature. I don't want them locking down my unearthed creature. If I can help it. Right, tacticians. Kind of scary. I guess we can also now just play the 6-4 haste while it has a decent window to attack. Yeah, that seems fine here. Fortunists can probably do better. Don't need Stalwart anymore. Yeah, the card selection is also huge here. Trying to trade for Tactician. Opponent takes it. Okay. Well, we're under quite a bit of pressure in the air now. And attack with Automaton, play Demolisher, maybe wait another turn on Golem to gain life. Down to 18 cards on library. Still have some pretty good ones left. Pretty happy they traded. And then, yeah, at some point can make a million one ones. Our worker does have reach, but I'll wait on chumping. Ooh, nice. This one's pretty great. Right, so we'll pay three. Gwena. A little late to the party, maybe. Do they have a bounce spell? Maybe just gonna loot with Urza.
Ooh, mask. Doesn't deal with a flyer, but it does make a large creature. Although we can just make lots of 1-1s, one which is probably better at this point. We'll just aggressively dig for maybe our uh, epic confrontation. And can still unearth it, so. Opponent down to 5. Not in any immediate danger of dying. Okay. Kind of a combo with the assembler. They can activate it twice in one turn cycle. I'll pay three. And a flyer is nice. Okay, so big boys attack. I guess the 6-5 doesn't have a great attack. Because they can just eat it. Although if they eat this, then they have to like double chump demolisher. And if I attack with everyone, they would just be dead. Yeah, all out attack. Probably okay. A little bit risky, admittedly, if there is one mana interaction, but they're more likely to just pump Assembler, eat Golem, and then yeah, if they double chump, they still take five. Well, we had a pretty much ideal start. Level Steel Seeker finding a ton of lands. Alright, that should do it. Decent hand. Alright, we've got our turn to Steel Seeker again. Perfect mana, no big deal. Although Burnished Hearts also would have helped fix it. Opponents got their own Burnished Heart. I guess we'll reciprocate here. Rock seems good enough to keep. Could have played Engineer into Rock. Although, never mind. I guess the Power Stone doesn't help cast the, uh, the bird here. Yeah, this seems slightly better. Courier is back. Right. They're not even going to try to pretend like they have a combo trick. Alright, I'm interested in sacrificing my Burnished Hearts. I think there is actually a counterspell that counters activated abilities. We'll see if that comes up. Yep, Defabricate, the uh, two mana uncommon. Either counters artifacts or activated or triggered abilities. Alright, don't need to play around it. Okay. Rock plus stalwart. But also just go for 7 mana Golem. Although it does get chumped by Heart, it doesn't really have an immediate impact. So sure we'll go Rock plus Stalwart. I'll main phase the Rock, why not? Get our Steel Seeker value. And then Inspector, we can probably do better, looking for some bigger creatures. So we've got all the mana we need. Now it's time to draw our 6-4 Hasters, 9 mana, make 3-4-4 four, four Hasters. Got a couple of those. 
especially in sealed the format tends to be a little slower so you've got more time to deploy your power stones and your expensive prototype creatures draft always a little bit more streamlined compared to sealed so decks tend to be more punishing of slow starts but even in the couple drafts i did so far it didn't seem like uh, the format was particularly fast even played a couple decks where I was afraid of decking more than lethal damage. Okay, Rock is sentenced to a life in prison. That's okay. Can still tap it with a stalwart, I think. Ooh, now we're talking. Well, the opponent does have a bunch of mana up, although probably to sacrifice heart. Although. Yeah, I could respect a counterspell here and go for Golem instead. I could go Golem plus Engineers. Could also go Rock plus Engineers. All right, let's try this. And then if I find a land, I'll reevaluate. Could also go for Trample Haste, but Power Stone still seems worthwhile, especially with a Steel Seeker in play. Mask. Putting that in the graveyard is good value. And then I'll keep up rock. And hopefully next turn smash him with a battalion. Could possibly bait out a counter spell with a rock as well. Right, that seemed to work. I'm not putting them on a counter spell necessarily. All right, fair enough. And nine nine Colossus. Now battalion doesn't look as impressive, but a uh, battery bearer certainly does. Don't want to unearth this quite yet since we don't have mana to spend making a large token. But uh probably gonna happen next turn. Make like a 9-9 or a 10-10 maybe. And then once we trade for Colossus, we can look into Battalion. Urza. Where is that scary? We don't have much removal. We better find it soon. Kinda happy they're attacking here since that allows Battalion to get in. I take 11. 11's a lot of damage. Yeah, I guess Stalwart's not needed anymore. Especially with the Battery Bearer now. can go. Kind of nice that we can also use Battalion as a mana creature here. But uh, probably better off smashing. We're one short of untapping the Colossus, luckily. Bones at seven. And next turn we'll unearth the mask.
Another static net. Who's next? Battery bear. So, is there a opponent dead on board? Uh, probably not. They are down to one card in hand, but of course they have Urza as a powerful mana sink that they can even activate twice next turn. They're still hoping to find removal for it. Another Steel Seeker. If I Steel Seeker, get back Mask, I can make a. Five, six, seven, eight, eight. Although ten ten is also not large enough to attack past the Colossus anyway. I guess we might as well get the extra card selection here. All right, that's what we need. So we'll see six, seven, eight. Yeah, if I were to attack now, they just eat a four, four, eat a two, two, take five. I don't think that's worth it. Alright, opponent's got enough mana to activate Urza twice here. That's scary. Right, just plays a worker. That's okay. Mine worker as well. No mana to activate Urza. That works for me. And then we can epically confront. Let's say I confront with a golem. Goes up to a 9-10 with 2 damage. And so 8 toughness. This shrinks down to a 9-9 again. But I would still be happy to trade there. Would be fine trading for the smaller ones. Not sure if they're dead on board. You can pump the worker up to a 6-6 six, six again. But I think this still makes the most sense. Alright, so let's say we attack with all. What happens? They could just chump the 9-8 with a 2-1. Or they could trade for the 9-8, eat a 4-4. Four, four. And then take six, seven, eight potentially. Nine, eight attack, and that's it. And then I could trade for worker and mine worker. I guess I should be more specific. If they pump the uh, power plants, they could double block and trade. But then next turn we can maybe attack all out and only lose one creature in the process. I'm happy with that outcome. Still have a lot of great top decks left. And uh, 12 cards remaining, double Steel Seeker. Means we'll have better top decks than our opponent on average. And that certainly counts. So if I all out attack, they can eat a 4-4. I think that's fine. Got one automaton left. Got the demolisher still in the deck. Couple other ones. Could make all the 1 1 tokens. That sorcery is still there. Would definitely win the game.
So that's kind of what we expected. We'll take six. And only a worker left. It'll be at four. Yeah, this game could have gone a little bit better for us had we just s slammed down the uh, battalion first chance we got. But uh, yeah, respecting a counter spell give our opponent more time to draw out of it. Sweet, still a close one here. Needed that epic confrontation to deal with Urza. All right, on the play and missing some early ramp this time. Although we can always play a Tomaton on three. And not always have our Steel Seeker. In our opening hands. And then hope to pick up a few lands. Maybe make a 4-4 four four if we find a fourth land. Yeah, I'm loving the prototype creatures so far. Flexibility is great. Right, opponent's got a uh, riposte. Alright, do I still want to make a 4-4? Four, four? Next turn I can play rock. And then I don't really have a 6 mana play lined up. So I guess 6-6... Six, six, Probably better than 4-4 four, four now. A bit harder to kill with a burn spell. Hope to ambush the architect here. Not counting on it. Might have a trick. Right. Soul partition, fair enough. Happy they're using it on the rock and not somewhere else. So now I could make a 6-6. Six, six. Yeah. Another Vanguard. So yeah, as soon as they play a couple artifacts, they're gonna hit us in the air. Might have to confront the Architect. Hope to pick up a land. Hmm, interesting attack. What does this imply? Like a 4 damage burn spell to finish off our 6-6. Six, six. And if they're using 2 spells here, I'm pretty happy. Yeah. Block. I'm guessing it's just 4 damage, second main. Yep. Well, that's why we didn't make a 4-4 four, four token to begin with. So what's next? Could make a 3-3 three, three golem and f uh, play a sprite. Just so we don't fall too far behind on board. And then as soon as we get to 7, we can replay Rock. Which gets us closer to Battalion, which will just end the game. Um, sure, I'll trade. Keep the board nice and clear. Engineers could kill a cohort, or probably better make a token. Don't think we need to confront. 
All right, I like where this is going. Gwena, Ethan two. So let's see if we go Gwena. The next run I can play Battalion without issue. Could also haste the Automaton here. Get a hidden for six. Yeah, close call. If we play Gwena, we'll get plus one counters next turn, so that's maybe still better. All out attacks, interesting. Implies they drew a trick. Yeah, I'll take it. Alright, well, we're not gonna run out of action anytime soon. Let's just hit for 12. And then next turn, AST 6 for put counters on Gwenna, on it. And maybe, I guess we cannot use confrontation with the mana from Gwenna, but yeah. Play Inspector and then Automaton. Smash. All right, sweet. Okay, so yeah, pretty swift three and zero with our sealed deck. Could keep playing, and undoubtedly we would do pretty well with this deck as uh, we've seen so far but uh, I think that's probably enough of a uh, sample of what the deck is capable of got pretty lucky admittedly to have all three colors in our opening hand but there's no shortage of fixing so that's always an important thing if you do plan to play a third color make sure you have a few extra sources of mana fixing plenty of uh, charts and tables out there you can consult to make sure the numbers uh, line up and make sense. But uh, yeah, always be on the lookout to play your best cards in sealed. In this case, definitely want to play Battalion. And then we had Gwena and the Awaken the Woods, which we didn't quite get to cast, but it would have been a great finisher in several spots. Pulling us into green, Double Steel Seeker did a lot of work. And then lucky to have at least one removal spell. So yeah, I think this is close to the ideal build of the sealed pool. There's a chance some sort of black combination also could have worked out. But uh, yeah, overall pretty happy with where we ended up. And sealed, as we've uh, said during the gameplay, tends to be a bit slower than draft, so you can afford to play a slightly greedier deck just to include a few more powerful cards to help you defeat the opponent's bombs. And uh, often it's difficult to assemble a hyper-aggressive two-color deck. They can come up, in which case... You might have to maybe, if you're playing best of three, sideboard into a slightly more disciplined deck if that's maybe only two colors as opposed to three, and maybe with a lower curve. But in general, I would always uh, strive to go with a slightly more powerful, even if it's slightly greedy, uh, build in sealed. And then, especially if you're playing best of three, feel free to have a sideboard plan ready in case you do need to slightly adjust your deck. And if you're playing in paper in a pre-release, for instance, I also recommend sleeving some cards that you plan to sideboard. So in between games, if you do want to switch a few cards around, you don't have to spend time sleeving a bunch of cards, and it's a much more seamless transition after sideboard. 
And yeah, if you need my help with card evaluations, I've made a whole spreadsheet with all my card ratings for the Brothers War that I've already updated after playing a couple drafts. So that can potentially help you out if you're planning to play in the pre-release this weekend or maybe planning a few drafts as well. And that's available for all my Twitch subscribers and Patreon supporters. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.